can we have a show of hands in this room? How many of us have actually dream of flying? I mean, at night, not just dreaming. I think most of us, right? Yeah. Okay, now, why is that? Because, I tell you why. Because being able to fly is actually intrinsic in our needs. Actually, we want to be able to fly. Even though we are not designed, uh, I mean, we are so heavy, we do not have the uh, energy concentration to fly, you know, and, and we can't fly, basically, but we wish that we can fly, right? So, from... Uh, from the beginning of time, you know, uh, people have always been dreaming uh, to fly. You know, 2,000 years ago, you have uh, uh, Didalus and Icarus trying to escape uh, from prison. So he fashioned uh, uh, wings from, uh, uh, you know, and, and it, but, but it wasn't successful. So likewise, uh, Leonardo da Vinci, 600 years ago as well, tried to build a flying machine. So, and again, it did not, it did not become uh, a reality. So flying is a very difficult exercise. I mean, we dream for it because it gives us the freedom. Psychologists would tell you that if you dream of flying, it's because you yearn for freedom. There is something in your life that doesn't give you that freedom, so that's why you dream about flying. Because suddenly, I mean, we are so used to, uh, uh, you know, moving in two dimensions. Suddenly, if you can fly, you can go into the third dimension, it is a huge deal. It is a huge thing, right? So, likewise, I mean, if you were to a look at the history of the aviation, 1903, uh, the first control flight that the Wright brothers came up with, the, the first uh, flying machine, you know. But it only take about 60 years for us to progress and send the first man to space, you know. And today, we think of nothing, you know, we could be here this evening, tomorrow morning we are in London, or it could be anywhere else. So we are taking this thing for granted, but if you realize that it take, actually takes us a lot in order to get where we are today. You know, uh, the Wright brothers, for instance, the father is actually a bishop. So when the two brothers actually wanted to build a flying machine, the father actually told them, this is heresy, you know, <laughs> this is heretic. You are, you are challenging the domain of God. You know? So every step of the way, there are always challenges on how on actually to progress. You, know, you have to overcome a lot of things. Even the Wright brothers, even if, since we are still talking about in the States, uh, 200 years or 100 years before that, when they want to build the first uh, uh, continental, transcontinental railway, you know, from, from the East Coast uh, to the West Coast, you know, they, they wanted to build the train. So people at that time were so used to uh, driving a horse. Now, a horse is only about 7 uh, kilometers per hour, a mile per hour. So when they want to build this train, everybody was telling, hey, no, you can't build a train. Why? The air will be sucked out from the carriage and everybody will die. <laughs> Okay, and this is a true story. So, same thing, you know. Today, uh, the next evolution in flying is actually drone. And you, you see in front of you here, it comes in various shapes and sizes. But we are today at a very early stage of uh, drone revolution. I mean, a lot of things are happening very, very soon. But I can tell you already, I mean, my, in my case personally, I started with drone in 2009. Uh, it's, it's, I don't have it here in front of me, but it's actually the, the top one uh, that you see on the screen there. Now, that drone, compared to the drones that are available on the market today, and I, I won't tell you the price of how it was uh, five, six years ago, it is almost ten times more expensive than the cheapest drone that you can buy today. Now, but having said that, today, you can buy a very, very cheap consumer drone that can give you the capability of even flying up to seven and eight kilometers away. Now, this is a huge thing. I mean, I used to uh, be able to only fly for about 600 meters and I lose the connection. It was very nerve-wracking. My first project was in Russia. Uh, I almost got shot, but that's another talk. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know I, I brought along my drone and they mistaken me for a terrorist. Okay? But of course, we went there with permissions and all that. So we brought this, uh, this drone uh, in, the, in, in Russia. We set it up and it's very nerve-wracking because it wasn't as advanced as it is today. You know? Uh, and I do not want to lose uh, 250,000 uh, in the air, you know. And, uh, but today, the drones are so uh, advanced and uh, so powerful that it doesn't take much to actually fly it. Okay? I'll, I'll show you something. Connection is lost, so you're going to have to... Okay, hold on. Alright. So, this is something that you can do with just a simple uh, consumer drone. And I can tell you, it is very, very liberating. So imagine flying in the air, you know, up to a couple of kilometers away from you, you know, wearing a goggle like this, just like this. So you will see nothing, 
but what you are seeing on the screen there. So you are really, really flying. You, you feel like you are like a bird, basically, you know. So it's, it's such a manifestation of uh, freedom, basically. I mean, it allows you to, to go very far, very, very far and experience life as you have never experienced before, basically. This is just uh, about three weeks ago, uh, I was in Iceland. This is the fun part of my business, but we went there to actually test our drone for a bigger, bigger cost. But imagine being able to fly, you know, and, and you are actually firmly on the ground, very safe. Sometimes we call ourselves the safe pilot. There's no risk for us, we are sitting on the ground, but we could be 500 meters uh, on the sky. You know? Later on, I will show you. In fact, yesterday we flew up to 15,000 feet on a separate exercise. I will tell you, because all of this is about changing the status quo, going beyond the status quo, because the whole idea here is that if we take the basic premise that drones are about to change the world and it is already happening now. So we just want to, I just want to tell you how this is going to happen in the near future. All right. So is it, you've seen the beautiful picture, but is it about beautiful picture? Actually, the answer is no. What we are doing is actually about beautiful data. Okay, what we want to do, uh, we want to use drone for the betterment of our life, for betterment of our business, for the betterment of the society. So how do we actually do that? You know, and at the end of the day, it's all boils down to our own creativity. Okay. This was uh, two days ago. This is at the footstep of uh, Mount Kinabalu, if you all recall. Uh, two months, three months ago, we had one of the worst uh, earthquake in, in Kinabalu. So we sent in our drones, uh, much uh, the same as uh, what is on display here. We flew to 15,000 feet. This is almost unheard of. This is actually a shot uh, top down uh, of the peak of uh, Kinabalu. So again, I'll give you, I'll show you another pictures. So these are just pictures of the, you know, of the peak of Kinabalu. But what do we do with it? Is it just pictures? I can tell you it's not. We are going beyond that as well. See, all of us are bestowed with two eyes. Right? If you close one of your eyes, you won't be able to have depth perception. Am I right? Right? So, stereoscopic vision will give us the, uh, the ability to actually gauge uh, depth. So, likewise, if you imagine, we take thousands of photos, thousands of photos then on our flying mission, and at every single spot of you know, the terrain, there are like maybe 20 different photos. Uh, I mean, it, it, uh, I mean the, the pictures are in, I mean, the, the spots are in 15 or 20 different pictures. Using the same technique, I wouldn't go into too much detail, but using the same stereoscopic technology, we will be able to recreate the terrain in 3D. This is how it looks like. This is something that we did. Can you imagine? Within a short period of time, we will be able to recreate the terrain of Mount Kinabalu. Now, once you have this model in your computer, you will be able to do all kind of analysis to it. So I'm just giving you a taste of what uh, the technology can be used for. You know, something like this, just uh, five years ago, cannot be done without spending mega, mega bucks. Now we are using very, very simple technology, but being able to transform uh, the this thing. So with this technology, we will be able to Likewise, just now we talk about uh, uh, on the mountain. This is how, how we use the same technology. We will be able to recreate uh, a construction site in up to centimeter level uh, accuracy. Right. So once we have this, we will be able to provide a detailed report for our client. I mean, I'm just giving an idea of uh, the kind of work that you can do using drone. Yeah. With this one, we use uh, the technology to monitor and report on uh, progress. This is very interesting. I'm just giving you another example. This is very interesting. We were tasked to provide monitoring uh, of our river system to prevent. I mean, we have, we have floods all the time in Malaysia. So now we use our drone and the interesting bit about this drone is that the drone will be able to detect any obstacles and automatically avoid itself. 
you know, so it won't hit any of the walls, it won't hit any overhead bridge or whatever. So this is all about going beyond. I mean, it used to take a lot of time and a lot of, I mean, human effort to go and, and capture and monitor uh, this kind of activity, right? Now using the drones, we could just, okay, here, lay the track, this is the, the river itself, off you go, basically. We can also use drones to uh, monitor natural resources. There's a lot of uh, sand tests, for instance, in Malaysia. Right? So we use uh, the drone, and very easily, the drone will be able to even capture the volume of the sand. Can you imagine how else could we have done this without spending days or even weeks in order to come up with this kind of uh, uh, data? Likewise, this is another example of uh, managing natural resources, forestry. We can then fly a drone much like this and autonomously uh, fly it for 100 and 150, up to 150 kilometers you know, to capture the kind of data that will transform the way uh, we manage our assets and resources. Now, I think I have sort of uh, uh, given you the idea that uh, there's a lot of things that you can do with drones, right? Uh, it's all boils down to us being creative and pushing the limit because the drones are really just a platform. You know, they are, I call them flying robots because anybody can fly them uh, now. Not, not previously, but now they've become so advanced with the uh, flight controller itself that almost anyone can fly. So the value in having drone is not in the flying itself, but what you can do with it. I mean, if you were to look at the history of the evolution, uh, of the world. I mean, we started with the Industrial Revolution, where everything is suddenly uh, uh, um, aut automated. You know, we have uh, economies of scale, everything is done uh, faster, you know, and uh, people's become... Uh, okay. Followed by that, we have the Information Revolution. I mean, we all have experienced that. Now we, have, we are all interconnected. The, the, now we become a global economy. You know, uh, uh, we can buy something from New York at the same time, deliver it in, in three days later. So we have that freedom uh, of information already. So, but what is next? See, the next thing is actually industrial internet. Industrial internet will mean that all the machines that we are using will be interconnected with each other. With each other. You know? That is actually IoT. And drones are actually a perfect candidate for IoT. So we are actually about to start into the future already. So what I have shown you just now is just a glimpse of some of what you can do with, with drones today. But where we are going is very, very interesting. So I'll give you an example. Okay. For instance, this is something that happened uh, in the country uh, early this year or late last year. It's very unfortunate. It's one of the worst uh, natural disaster of one of the worst flood in recorded history. So we had a team of uh, drones actually scattered all around the country. So we, we capture the uh, the calamity. We share the data with the emergency responders to help them, um, you know, in their work, in their effort. We share the data. We share the visual with the broadcasters. That will help people to have a, a good understanding of what's happening. This visual was also shared. Uh, globally, I mean, it was used in, in various broadcasters and stuff. So it is actually beneficial uh, in many counts. Uh, this is not something that uh, was available before. You know, imagine we have a network of drone uh, control from a sensor. You know, that can beam this visual life as well as and when we needed it. You know? So, but anyway, this is what we are doing today. All right? I will leave you with an idea. I, mean, I will leave you with a challenge of. What do you want to do next with drones? If you think of it as only a platform uh, for you to improve and better uh, whatever business that you are doing or whatever activity it is that you are doing. Okay. Next, I will show you our vision of the future for search and rescue. I mean, this is being developed, but this is something that we hope and uh, look forward to happen very, very soon. system active. Initiating search protocol. Human body detected. Active. 
emitting biological sensors. Survival chance 5.78%. Effect team arrival in T minus 90 seconds. It looks and sounds very futuristic, but I can assure you that is something that is coming already. And it all boils down to us pushing the limit and doing what it is that we wanted to do. Thank you very much.